running back. And on first down, they'll fake the toss and look to go deep down the sideline. It is batted away. Terry and Arnold with great hands denying DJ England Chisholm, who had the big catches against Miami a year ago. Boy, I love the play call, right? A lot of times a team will come into this game and play a little hesitant at first, take a deep shot, but that is perfect coverage. 6-2-300. He could weigh down the back of the boat. Here's England Chisholm, who was magnificent last year against Miami. Two catches for 169 yards, including a school record 98-yard touchdown. And that's all they needed there. Now first down, looking for the end zone. Incomplete, trying to find Chisholm. There's a flag down. This is going to be roughing the passer. Looks like Jaheim Owen. Sark is trying to do. And they fake it. Worthy on the end around. Cuts underneath. Thought he might take it wide. Terry and Arnold brought him down to prevent a big game. It'll be third down. Wow. Watch this. Watch Sanders zero go back. Now he's going to go the other way. Look at these offensive linemen. They got nobody to block downfield. Nobody there. What a play there by Arnold. Texas now back to work and the freshman is tackled behind the line. Terry and Arnold got Baxter who loses about four. Good job here by Arnold. He's got able to get inside the receiver Mitchell with that quickness. He may have been coming there and kind of that run blitz bringing pressure off the boundary. Remember earlier he made a big play in space prevented a touchdown by Texas. This time comes up get major. Take it to Brooks. Ewers looking across the middle, and it's incomplete. Waiting for the football was Mitchell, but Arnold arrived to knock it loose. It's been an up and down night for Arnold, right? I mean, he's made some plays and he's made some mistakes. This time he does a good job of reacting. Once that ball's in the air, times that up really well. As soon as it looks like Mitchell might be able to come up with a big gain and another. Bulls. Play action again for Brown. Well protected. Floats one over the middle. Incomplete. Over through to this game, you want to stomp them out immediately so that you don't allow them to hang around. Brown lobs one down the sideline for Brown. Stevens incomplete at the front right pylon. It fell down the chimney, but Michael Brown Stevens couldn't control it, and it brings up another third down and long. And you'll see right here on this replay, Byron Brown throws it up, drops it in the bucket. We see you, Byron Brown. He's back to throw. He's going to take a shot for Brown Stevens. Incomplete. Terry and Arnold in perfect position on Michael Brown Stevens. Second down and 10. Terry and Arnold doing double duty as a returner and out there playing cornerback. But what you see from this USF quarterback out there playing the way that he just did on that last play. Screen. Atkins for the 49 yard line. He's got five. Another tackle for tricks out the bag to try to keep USF in this football game here. Play action to the sideline, well wide of Michael Brown Stevens. And we've seen that a couple times now. I want all offensive coordinators to listen to me right now. As a dual threat quarterback, when you see your Rebels on first down for the 25 yard line, they hand it off on a jet sweep and quickly get a couple yards. Dayton Wade, but it's read beautifully for Alabama. Let's take a look. When actual play takes place, that's why he has to sit for one. Well, here is that play. It's a shovel pass, and running to the right is Wade, and Wade is shuttled out of bounds right into the cheerleaders. They're down at three. Takes the low snap. Pressure's coming a little late. They flush him out of the pocket. Incomplete. Lawson and Keenan were both going after him in the backfield. Dart had the time there. Every time the offensive line protects, well, I feel like Ross has a big smile up there <laughs> in the booth. And you're going to see Dart's going to get the ball. He's going to be looking out to the left side of the field. And Malachi Moore matched up right there on Wade, just completely shuts him down, gets his feet in the ground. It's like synchronized the sack. They can't spike it after that. Trey Harris is in on the far side. They go to him toward the pylon, and it's incomplete. One-on-one -on -one coverage broken up. That was Arnold. Arnold has been fun to watch this year. Kool-Aid McKentry gets all the love on the other side, but this guy's feisty, he competes, and the one thing when we talked about 
Phil, we talked to Kevin Steele about him. He said he's the energizer bunny. He has a personality that matches a Deion Sanders. He loves it. Down at six. Off the play fake. Dart steps up in the pocket, looking long toward the middle of the field, and it's intercepted. Arnolds brings it back across the 30. Beautiful spin move across the 35. And he's up to the 42 before Franklin makes the tackle. You hear this crowd going wild. That was a spark that they all needed, and that was a spark that this Alabama defense needed. Arnold comes away with the interception, but it could have been Downs as well. They have way double covered down the field. Downs is below, Arnold's on top of it. Really good defense by this Alabama secondary. Alabama with the lead in the ball when we get back. Well, big time wide out at Penn State. Brad and Gary will have that with Jenny. And that pass play is broken up. It was in the direction of Trey Harris, who's played limited snaps today. I think they're just happy having him on the field, but Arnold did a great job. They definitely are happy because he has five touchdowns already. But well, watch both of these guys. Some people, mm. he grabs a little bit of that jersey. The reason it's not called, I believe, is because Harris is pushing and Arnold is pushing. When you. His own goalposts. And a play fake. Incomplete. And no flag. Thomas was working against Arnold. They like to test Arnold a little bit more than they do Kool-Aid McKinstry on the other side. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Kool-Aid's an All-American on the other end. And the Mississippi State fans want it. Some pass interference. He saw the hands there grabbing the jersey. It's always a judgment call, but I might have flagged him there. Yeah. Rogers up top. A little bit too strong intended for Xavion Thomas. Sets a fourth down and four. So they, Not in a negative way. He's, right. I just talked to him. Little double reverse here. But well read by the defense. Xavion Thomas with nowhere to go. Pushed out of bounds. Oh. He'll lose about a yard. And yeah, Arnold probably had something to say after that play. What did he tell us yesterday? He's like... I'm an old soul, old school man. You just, uh, you want to see me play tomorrow? Watch me. <laughs> I got it. I'm super bad. <laughs> well, James Brown. Yeah, friend. yeah. Old soul. A Rocky Long disciple as well. Nice pass complete. That's Mosley, pardon me, Robeson. And we stopped up short of the first down. Third down coming. Here's to the top of your screen for the left-handed Max Johnson. Looking that way if he has time. Dallas Turner first, then he got around Austin. Now he's going to keep it, but he's not going to get a first down. And I thought he should have stayed outside there that time. Or at least set up the block a little bit more, and he tried to stretch the play. As he gets wide, because that time Dallas Turner again comes in from the edge to force him out of the pocket, but too soon to cut back. He's not quick enough to get past all the, you know, the pursuit of that Bama. D See if that kick starts the Aggies offense. Le'Veon Moss broke one tackle, but not the second one. Picked up maybe two yards. And Jenny talked during the end of the first quarter going into the second with Coach Saban. Le'Veon Moss in the backfield with Johnson. He fakes it to him. Max backpedaling and lofting one and whoop in and out of the hands. Should have had it, Moose Muhammad. When I threw that, I went, oh no, that you don't lob the ball up against the safeties against that. That baby hung up. I know. I was like, oh no, no, no. And then you look down, and Moose Muhammad had a chance to catch it and went right through his hands. <laughs> You know, we talk about uh, Alabama not being able to run the ball, but the tailbacks to down to six. And this is going to be a loss for Ruben Owens. I'll tell you, Dallas Turner is on fire on the edge right now. Terry and Arnold did on the stop as well. Can I handle this guy, number 15, who said is he the best player? And right now he's the best player on that defense. They had a guy 31 Anderson a year ago, but this time 15's taken over. Yeah, we said to Max Johnson yesterday, at least you don't have number 31. Turner's coming again. Johnson going long. Man there. And Aya Smith, but it's broken up at the very last moment. 
by Terry and Arnold. Well, Terry and Arnold came almost famous for getting the wrath of Nick Saban last week coming to the sideline. And this time he gets beat, but does not give up on the play. Not everything is perfect. Stays with it and makes the play. And Nia Smith said this week, we know what Coach Saban wants, and we've got something for him. And Terry and Arnold said, I've been here three years. I still don't know what he wants. <laughs> well, sometimes he wants one thing. Two-yard line. Johnson throws incomplete. Going to the third quarter. Arkansas has not scored since the middle of the first, and they don't have a touchdown yet. Jefferson, as a flag goes down, trying to get out of there, and finally is tackled. Terry on Arnold was holding on for dear life and eventually got the quarterback to the ground. Let's see what the penalty is about. So that was a Francis Sherman trying to block. Kevin Steele going to bring a little pressure, bringing Terry on Arnold off the edge. Nobody accounts for him, unable to get to him. And another sack here for this Alabama defense. Terry. Colorado losing to Stanford last night after leading 29 nothing at halftime. Here's Tesla on the catch out in space. He's picked up and dropped by Arnold. Uh, short third down conversions today. This one's third and seven. He's going to flare it out to right. Looking for blockers. Nothing there. Wrestled out of bounds. Terry and Arnold. And that'll force a punt. So as Nick said to Jenny, third down, we have to win. We let him out of the bag in the first quarter too many times. This time, Tennessee tries to just uh, run a safe play on third and long. And they're Daniels throws the out and in and out of the hands. Nice play by Terry and Arnold over there on the corner intended for Lacey. We talked about Nick Saban's pride and joy. Bump and run to the outside. Kool-Aid on one side, Arnold on the other. 17 to the 46. Now wide receiver screen. That got great blown effort. up out there by Terry and Arnold. Terry and Arnold, great effort that time. You're going to get those plays, and if you can't handle the blocks by your corners, you're going to get more and more of them. Watch Terry and Arnold blow this play up, run right through neighbors on the play, and get it. What oh, was it, Brian Thomas? It was Brian Thomas, excuse me. To Atlanta and maybe beyond. But they still got the Tigers here, but now it's intercepted. Picked off by Terry on Arnold on a tip ball. It was Dallas Turner that got the tip. He made the play. Back-to-back -back stops, Turner times it, and Terry and Arnold is the recipient of it. Only the fourth interception suffered by Jaden Daniels this year. And what a huge play. We were talking about not having turnovers. Here comes one. Watch it. He reads the quick throw, jumps up, and makes the play. Boom. And Terry on Arnold takes the rip. ricochet, his second interception of the season. Hole with 13 minutes to go. Nussmeyer sidearms it out, complete to Thomas. To be they've got right now, down by 14. Got to keep throwing. Nussmeyer high, but tipped away. Incomplete. Neighbors the intended receiver and Terry on Arnold again with a hand in there. He had the key interception earlier, remember? Yeah. Neighbors could not come back to the ball because he had to jump for it. Remember early in the game. And the crowd knowing what Gary just said just erupted. Nussmeyer pressured. Throws. Caught by neighbors. Think he nope, he it. bobbled it. Yep. And that could be it. Ball well thrown. Neighbors takes his helmet off because he thought he should have had it, and he should have. And how about this Alabama defense 
for two big games in a row they we were here Tennessee in this one yep. they shut them out in the second half never would have thought that either game not with those two offenses so neighbors who came in with big numbers and had what can Devin Leary and the Cats find offensively Leary quick strike to the outside ball is out ball is scooped Caleb Downs reaching for the end zone and ruled down at the one yard line it was Barry and Brown who coughed it up and Caleb Downs the sensational freshman that guy is just different quick to get on it always in the right place at the right time but we didn't see if Barry on Brown had this looks like he bobbles it a little bit as he's turning did he get complete control cherry on Arnold there the corner punching that ball out great heads up play this Kentucky team has struggled with drops on the outside Barry on Brown and Dane key they've struggled with ball security if that indeed is a fumble and it looked like it is a huge blow to Kentucky as we just mentioned trying to just get back on track in this game It looked like he initially bobbled it, but as he was kind of bent over it, it looked like he had firm control there. So that's just an unbelievable play by Terry on our. Second and 15 after the penalty. Leary drives the ball incomplete to the inside of Braswell off the edge in the bottom here. Goes to the near side, gets it complete, but it's going to be three yards shy of the lane to gain as Terry on Arnold was quickly on Robinson. Just great coverage plastered all over Robinson Arnold plays outside a corner. He'll move inside to that star position with some of the injuries. Jay Third and 11. Excellent break on the ball from Arnold. Terry on Arnold. What an interception. Roll time. Well, that ball just a little late to the outside. Watch this second movement, that slide right there. See that? When his third foot hit the ground, the ball didn't come out, and that ball was a hair late. Terry on Arnold able to undercut that deep out route from the slot. If that's thrown on time to the outside, might be a completion. But just that little subtle hop, that hop backwards to the side from Leary, changes the timing by a split second and gives Arnold the opportunity. And Arnold's been very outspoken about the way this team has grown this season, saying, you know, those people out there that were saying the negative things about us, about Alabama, we wouldn't be this, we wouldn't do that. He said, Davis, the star running back, held to just 23 yards rushing in that first half. Leary, play action, into traffic, incomplete, broken up by Terrion Arnold. Oh, Terrion all over that, and that was a dangerous throw because Christian Story, the safety, also filling. Picks up the pressure as Leary just had to throw it away. Terry on Arnold was fighting nonstop to get to Devin Leary and Tim Keenan joined him there. How many times have we said Terry on Arnold's name? And every time I feel like we say it, he's in a different spot, right? Because of the injuries, he's sometimes outside, sometimes at that star position, this time blitzing off the side. Davis does a great job of trying to get in front of him, but an even better job by Arnold of skirting that tackle. Excuse me, skirting that block. Third and seven. Larry backed up again, and it's incomplete. As Arnold. Sean Berg, tip drill. Incomplete. It actually looked like a Chattanooga player was the closest one to it, Sam Phillips, but that one hit the ground. That was almost a miraculous reception there. Immaculate reception. That ball pops up in the air. Sam Phillips right there on the spot. Great job by Terry and Arnold sticking a ball in there and batting that ball away. First and 10 from the 25. Schaumburg, quick pass to the outside, finds Mays. And the defense swarms all over it. You know, Rocky, as a former defensive guy, I know you love this defense because it is so complex. They show you so many different formations. And, and it's, an, it's an anomaly because we live in the age where there's so much offense out there, so many formations and motions and shifts. So the tendency and what most, most defensive coaches do is, hey, we got to go simple, right? Because we don't know what they're going to do. Alabama's the opposite. They just keep. Third and nine. 
Schomburg hit as he throws. Incomplete. Out what he's missing. Second and 12. Sidearm through behind his receiver, Sam Phillips. Well, that's big because Chase Artopius actually went to use his two edge rushers in. Empty backfield as Thorne's in trouble. Trying to run out of it. And he throws at the last second. I think he might have been over the line of scrimmage. It's incomplete. And Luke Beal, the intended receiver. And Terry and Arnold is the guy that's down. Yeah, he was over by a good bit, wasn't he? I thought so, by at least a stride. Edge rushers get in the game, and you know what happened is they called him out of bounds before he threw it. Did he step out of bounds before he threw the first down for Auburn? Jarquez Hunter trying to get to the edge, only got about two yards, and Terry and Arnold made the stop along with Deontay Lawson. Auburn's running game got him their touchdown, though. It sure did. I mean, they still have not completed a pass in this game, and they had to turn to the running game to make it happen. Finally, they popped one. They stuck with it enough, popped one, and that was the big play they needed that produced the touchdown. Or something like that. We're going to see Peyton Thorne's arm if he doesn't get Whoa. sacked, and that might be the case. So he's going to let it fly. Down at the goal line, intercepted right at the goal line by Terry and Arnold. So he got it. There. Perfect. Thorne rips it down the middle. And he did he tuck it in there? No, nope. incomplete. Nope. And that was Fairweather, his favorite receiver, and he took a big shot. Well, this was good Alabama pass defense this time. Forced the ball inside, and everybody closes on it cleanly. Arnold comes across from one side, Campbell from the other. Line with one second to go. Thorne lofts one out. It is intercepted. Terry and Arnold will end it for the tide, maybe with a touchdown. The craziest, most unbelievable final 40 seconds of football that maybe you'll ever see unless you've been to the Iron Bowl before. That's exactly right. Just put another chapter into this game. A walk-off pick six by Terry Nato will change the score. It will not look like what this game has been about for three and a half hours. Actually, it's exactly what everything looked at like for the last three and a half hours. It's been a little bit of everything. I mean, the score was a lot yes, closer. Yes, I, I know. I mean, it's just, I mean, everything happened in this football game, including the last play of pick six. He's got the Georgia touchdown today. Bell in motion. Beck rolls one way and now goes deep. Incomplete. That was close, wasn't it? Yep, Arian Smith, the intended receiver. Could have been picked off, though. Yeah, the opposite corner that really doesn't come into your eye this time. I think it was McKinstry. Comes from one side to the other. Watch, he just lays off, just looks at the quarterback. Quarterback will never see that guy come in the post the other way, and he falls back on it. He thought he had it, what, six inches away? Yep. Kool-Aid got his hands on it, tipped it away. Minutes ago. That's Bowers on the move. Beck throws right side, but it's going to be those of me, Jack Saint. And oh boy, at the last second, he almost got the first down. But he's short. It's fourth and one. Third down. Third and third and one. Yep. ATT pylon cam shows that he struggled and struggled and struggled and just. Still a yard shot. Very good route against Terry and Arnold that time. On Edwards' time, or it's a quarterback sneak. It's a pitch. Edwards. And Great penetration by Alabama, and they stop it. We just talked about Terry and Arnold. One of the things that the Alabama secondary does, both of the quarterbacks, McKinstry and Arnold, they will tackle. They will play the run. Watch him play the run. He's got Oscar Delp, a tight end in his face. He takes it on and makes the play. That's Alabama defense right there. You love it when your corners will play run defense like that. You've got some. Play fake to Edwards. 
Down the middle and into some traffic incomplete intended for McConkey. So you just wonder, just out loud, the way McConkey is limping, the way that Brock Bowers is not 100%, might it be better for this Georgia team to get their healthy players on the field? It appears to me that Ladd cannot get separation. Well, this gets in a slot on the right-hand side on second and a yard. Back. Looking the Rosemary, Rosemary Jack Saints incomplete too low. Kendall Milton back and in. Did he get there? No, remember, he did not. Even if Georgia scores, remember, and Kirby's going to take a timeout. He's all the way down to the three yard line to call that timeout. He knows how valuable time is right at this point in the game. Boy, they filled that hole beautifully. Those two stops is buying a timeout from Georgia and probably 30 seconds on the clock. Terry and Arnold made the first contact. Then he got help from his friends in the middle of the pile, led by Jahad Campbell. And just that close. The elbow closer than the ball. Turner inside here. Don't bring extra pressure. The pass is incomplete. He tried to squeeze it in there to the tight end, and Terry and Arnold broke it up. And so Michigan avoids the turnover, but goes three and out. You know, Michigan faced a lot of zone coverage in the Big Ten, with the exception of Ohio State and maybe a handful of other games. He's an effective thrower as well. He got four. McCarthy's back in there looking to throw. Loops it downfield and over the head of Cornelius Johnson, who had a step in front of Terry and Arnold. And Blake Corn does a good job on that right side of picking up Caleb Downs. Now it's just one on one. You're going to get these matchups. Ball is out early and just a little bit behind Cornelius Johnson. He got some separation at the. No real inline tight ends on this third down play. And another fastball off target. Morgan, the intended receiver there, but. J.J.'s been misfiring a bit, and it's a three and out. At that, that one, I think, went right through his arms. I think this one was a little bit better. Back into the boundary, soft coverage. I think he's got a chance. Yeah, oh, that yeah. one goes right through his hands. He read that perfectly, sees Downs coming down, puts it right through the hands, and the young freshman unable to bring that in. That would have been a first down. Yeah, that one certainly on target. Down the top wide receiver targets on this team all afternoon. McCarthy drops it to Edwards, who drops it himself. But Boygby again provided pressure, and this Michigan offense has just fizzled after halftime. Uh, we, we, we said even before we got to the second half, it's a game of adjustments. Alabama's been playing a lot of man-to-man. -man. Here, they play zone. They're able to get the pressure. Even if Edwards makes that catch, there are white jerseys running to the football, all eyes on the ball instead of with their back turn playing man coverage. Drop.